Hello everyone and welcome to the presentation LKRG in a nutshell, where I would like to briefly describe a project which I fully designed and implemented during a spare time and currently is defended by OpenWall. Uh, two sentences about myself. My name is Adam Zabrodzki. Among others, I use nickname PI3. You can always contact with me through the private email or through the Twitter account. Currently, uh, I'm working as a principal offensive security researcher at NVIDIA. In the past, I used to work uh, in the offensive security research team at Microsoft in a European organization for nuclear research known as CERN, in Hispasic Systemas, known from the VirusTotal project, in Wrocław Center for Networking and Supercomputing, in Sigital, and a few more. Also, on the spare time, I like to do bug hunting, and I found bugs among others in Hyper-V hypervisor, KVM VGP implementation, Linux kernel, OpenSSH, GCC, SSP Propolis implementation, Apache, XPDF, and a few more, and I have CVE, num CVE numbers for them. Uh, also, I like to study various exploitation techniques and mitigation techniques, how to design them, how to not design them, and some of my research has been pub was published on Frag Magazine. Uh, I was also a member of RSI project, which was one of the first reverse engineering framework focused on Unix binaries like ELF. Uh, this is also a good time to acknowledge uh, following people uh, which had direct impact on the LKRG and without them the project won't be what it is now. Uh, and uh, big thanks to Alexander Peslak, uh, also known as a solar designer, which was always challenging uh, uh, in the various stages of the project and helped me designing various uh, features. Um, also, following people also had direct impact on the LKG, which are listed here. And uh, additionally, in the past, uh, I would all, uh, following people also gave me a constructive criticism and feedback, and we brainstorm about the various uh, features of the project, which is uh, Rafa Nergal, Wojtczuk, Brad Spender, Spengler, and Pax team, uh, which is essentially PPAX. So, what it is uh, LKRG? So LKRG stands from the Linux kernel Runtime Guard, which is somehow self-explanatory. Uh, so it's a project who tries to guard Linux kernel during the runtime. Uh, this project is an open source project published under GPLv2 license. So it's free. Everybody can go and use it. So please uh, do that and send us feedback. When I'm going to speak about LKRG, I always think about uh, main branch, uh, which uh, consists from the two main features, which is integrity checking and anti-exploitation. In the past, there was also uh, experimental branch. However, we do not develop it anymore. So the main branch consists from the two main ideologically uh, main uh, subsystem. First of all is uh, system integrity and second one is task integrity. And LKRG was designed on for the four main architecture, which is x86 in the 32 and 64 bits, also for ARM architecture 32 and 64 bits as well. And system integrity subsystem consists from the following features like monitoring critical CPU metadata, critical kernel variables, and uh, also uh, checks integrity of the entire text section of kernel core itself, also for every module which was dynamically loaded to the system. And task integrity feature from the high level uh, can be uh, divided in the following subsystem, which is monitoring critical attributes of every task. And uh, when I reference task, I mean the task uh, definition from the Linux kernel internal perspective, which covers every thread and every process itself. And also task integrity system has a control, basic simple control flow uh, feature. And also it is worth to mention that there is no real um, division between these two subsystem, which is task integrity and system integrity. They overlap each other. However, from the high level perspective, this is uh, how it could be from the functionality level divided. However, these uh, two feature overlaps in the various ways. So there's no like real boundary between them. And so in short, uh, the system integrity, the feature we can summarize as it detects unsupported kernel notifications, modifications, and as a default response uh, for violation, 
um, it panics the kernel and another response would be ineffective. And task integrity feature, from the high-level perspective, we can describe that as uh, it tries to detect the kernel exploitation process itself. It doesn't try to detect specific exploit, but just a process of exploitation itself. And as a default response, is try to it kills the, the task, uh, which is uh, violated. Now, officially, LKRG is distributed as a source code. So you can download the source code from the official uh, open world page, which is openworld.com slash LKRG, or you can get it from source code can be get it from the GitHub, which is github.com slash openworld slash LKRG. Additionally, some of the distribution uh, create a package uh, to make it easier for installation uh, and uh, it would be available in the Alt Linux, in Arch Linux, in Astra Linux, in Debian and Ubuntu, uh, which you could reuse the one X kick secure package, uh, which they create especially for the system. Also in the Gentoo Linux, uh, when you use Pento overlay, you can also install LKRG easily. Also in the one X and kick secure itself, it's available. And also there is a few other less known distributions who also implement LKRG as a package. And it's also worth to mention that uh, the few of the exploitation framework which is which are LKRG aware, they have uh, interesting response. For example, Metasploits, when they detect LKRG in the system, they just bails out and do not run any more exploits, even if the version of the kernel would suggest it's vulnerable to the specific vulnerability. And exploit suggesters also bails out when detect LKRG. So let's briefly uh, describe also anti-exploitation feature. What does it do and how does it work? So uh, as I mentioned before, the aim of it is to detect kernel exploitation process itself by detecting a specific data corruption in the kernel. And it is being done uh, by two uh, main uh, subsystems. Again, they overlap. There is no real division between them. However, from the high-level perspective, it can be looked as a two subsystems. Uh, first subsystems, uh, it tries to monitor critical process and system attributes, which are critical from the security perspective. And by doing that, LKRG has a possibility uh, to detect various elevation of privilege attacks, including token or pointer swapping attacks, including illegal call to the commit cred function, or uh, just simple overwriting the cred or real cred structures or values in the structures. Uh, also, LKRG has the ability to detect various sandbox escapes, for example, that sandbox which is used by the Chrome browser. So whenever attacker would like to break the sandbox and would like to overwrite various seccomp configuration or overwrite seccomp rules, LKRG will check that and verify that and can catch such escapes. Also, various namespace escapes um, will be might, might be detected by LKRG because LKRG monitors uh, namespace configurations, all namespaces configurations, which also implies that uh, LKRG has an ability to detect various container escapes, example, escapes from the Docker or from the Kubernetes, which are using uh, kernel um, primitives. Additionally, uh, this subsystem has an ability to verify if there is some illegal changes of the system, including, for example, CPU states. So if someone disables SMAP feature in the CPU or SMEP feature or write protection or various MSRs, LKRG monitors them and can appropriately react on such events. Also, if attacker or uh, any malicious code tries to change the kernel text section or model, any part of the kernel or model text section, it will be detected and um, Resp appropriate response uh, will be enforced by LKRG. Second subsystem, which we call Spursman Control Flow Integrity, in short PCFI, has an ability to detect and block return oriented programming, known as ROP. And to be able to do ROP, you, uh, it's most likely you will need to also do stack pivoting attack and uh, 
PCFI has an ability independently also to detect and uh, protect from stack pivoting attacks itself. Additionally, LKRG might detect illegal uh, control flow. Uh, if it's coming from example from any non text section pages, LKRG will do stack walk and detect that this is not legal page and appropriate, appropriate response will be enforced. When there is any illegal control flow from dynamically generated executable pages, for example, by creating such page uh, by various syscalls like MMAP and then giving them appropriate rights or from jitting. Also from any pages not belonging to the kernel, example, user mode pages, if there's execution from such type of pages, LKRG will see that and might see it and appropriate response will be enforced. And also when attacker bypasses SMEP protection and such execution from the user mode pages will be uh, enforced, still it will be detected by the PC file itself. And here is a couple of examples. How does it works in the um, real world? So here's an uh, example of detection of calls into the kernel API from non-code pages. And the exploit uh, was written for the bug with the CVE number 2017-100112. And as you can see here, the LKRG verifies that these specific addresses in the stack during the stack work are not alleged and it kills the process. And this is how it looks like from the exploiter perspective. So at first, exploit thinks that it bypassed SMEP and it maps the fake stack and also executed stack pivoting. However, the LKRG detected such attacks and killed such process. However, this exploit was slightly more complicated than the normal, uh, the usual one, because it didn't leverage on privilege. However, it was giving to the file, uh, which in that case was TMP shell file, uh, was giving an extra attributes, which was suid attributes as, and as git attributes with the root account. Uh, however, because LKRG detected that, it isolated such file. So it removes all of the access and all of the attributes to this file and isolated it and changed the owner to nobody from root. So this file is inaccessible by anyone excluding root. And here is an example of ROP detection. So the ROP detection, it's uh, <clears throat> the possibility how the LKRG can detect the ROP. Uh, it's based on the idea that whenever someone would like to execute an ROP uh, uh, chain, it needs to change the original stack page. And whenever this situation happens, LKRG has a detection race that this specific stack page is not the original one which process normally used. And here you can see that <clears throat> The, the ROP was detected by PCFI models that the process 2127 with the PIT 2127 with the name POC has invalid base of the stack pointer and also has invalid stack pointer itself, not only the base. And because it was detected, such process was killed. Uh, however, also I want to mention that in this specific log from the kernel, we can see also the kernel addresses. However, it is only visible when the log level four for LKRG is enforced. And this is not default. I did it just from this presentation to have more detailed output. However, by default, such addresses are not leaked to the user mode by LKRG. We make sure we do not leak addresses. And here is example of running the Metasploit. Um, the terminal of Metasploit can be seen on the left and the terminal of LKRG can be seen in the yellow box. So first, um, I would try to run the exploit for the BPF sign extension privilege escalation bug. And when I try to run it, there's an information printed by Metasploit that the target is not vulnerable. And the reason it is printed that the target is not vulnerable is because LKRG is detected by Metasploit, so it bails out. However, it suggests Metasploit that you can try anyway to set the flag force exploit to true to ignore that information and try to run this exploit anyway. 
So we did that. We set the force exploit uh, settings to true. We run the exploit. However, as you can see, the exploit when try to run, it detects LKRG by itself as well, independently from the Metasploit framework and pretend the information that the target does not appear to be vulnerable. However, regardless, uh, of that information, because the forest exploit flag was set to true, it tries to continue exploitation. So the new file uh, is generated, that new process is being generated. However, as you can see, the exploit completed, but no session was created. So there is no extra uh, meterpreter created. And as you can see in the terminal, we can see that the LKRG detected the process 6262 with this weird name, which matching the name from the Metasploit um, terminal as well. And we can see that this process tried to change their user ID from 1000 to zero, which is root. So LKRG correctly detected such exploit and killed this. Next, we unload the LKRG and try to rerun the same exploit, even with say, setting the first exploit flag to false. And as you can see, the exploit run correctly. The meterpreter meter session 4 has been opened and we are a root account. And we can verify this by execu executing get UID command. However, anti-exploitation feature has a limitation which we are always open about. So, uh, anti-exploitation feature uh, which LKRG implements is bypassable by design, at least for now. And the reason why is because it's difficult to protect from the same trust level. So, if you are trying to protect from the ring zero, ring zero itself, we always end up in the cat and mouse game. And that's why we uh, saying is bypassable by design. And you can bypass LKRG by various ways. First of all, you can try to fly under LKRG's radar. So, for example, you can try to override that critical metadata in the kernel, which are not currently guarded by LKRG. However, it may be still enough to give you some kind of primitives or benefits which you want. So instead of leveraging the elevation of privilege or breaking any kind of the sandbox, for example, maybe you can steal some data and that's all. And uh, if this is not guarded by LKRG or corruption of any metadata or structure which are not guarded by LKRG, obviously it won't be visible for it. Uh, also, there is a couple of races which you can try to win and still be, um, because of that, you will be invisible for L LKRG. For example, you can try to do some kind of corruption, use this uh, newly corrupted structure or primitives, and then revert the corruption as fast as possible. And if you win the race between the verification, you will be invisible. Also, you might try to move uh, attack to the user space itself. So for example, you can use kernel vulnerabilities. However, you will use these kernel primitives to attack user space program, privileged user space program. And LKRG is not designed for protecting such scenario. Additionally, you can try to attack LKRG itself, for example, by disabling and continue normal work. Uh, for example, you can try to win races where you will corrupting the original attributes in the kernel and at the same time you will try to also corrupt the LKRG's database. So if you do it fast enough that uh, LKRG will not be able to verify the newly corrupted attributes in the kernel before you corrupt LKRG database, you will be also invisible. Additionally, you can try to attack LKRG's internal synchronization or locking mechanism. And also, you can try to find all LKRG's running contexts and disable them and block creation of new one. However, this one, I believe, is the most difficult from all of that described uh, above. Additionally, there is type of the attacks like uh, Dirty Cow, which attacks user space using kernel primitives. So it's something similar to the bypass, which we mentioned before, when you try to move attack to user space. Such type of the attacks are very difficult to detect itself and uh, LKRG won't be able to help. However, the, however, Dirtica itself is slightly different because if during the process of exploitation Dirtica bugs you modify that pages which belongs to the kernel, then the system integrity subsystem would be able to catch. But if you directly attack user space, of course it will be invisible.
<laughs> and speaking about system integrity, how does it work? So from the high level perspective, uh, system integrity uh, of LKRG, it calculates hashes from the various critical data or metadata in the system, like CPU, so, for example. And the uh, hash algorithm which is used to do that is a SIP hash. And the guarded regions uh, are, for example, all critical uh, vCPU or CPU or individual cores metadata and uh, how these uh, metadata are being collected and guarded. LKRG sends an inter-process interrupt, known as an EP, uh, to each individual core in all CPUs or virtual CPUs to exclusively run LKRG's function. And this function collects the information like IDT, like MSR, like control registers, etc. Additionally, LKRG keeps information about how many virtual CPUs or CPUs or cores are in the state of online, offline or possible and whenever such state is being changed dynamically, LKRG enforce appropriate action and appropriate verification. Also, entire Linux kernel text section is guarded and this covers almost entire Linux kernel itself, like syscall tables, like all procedures, all functions, all interrupt handlers, etc. Also, entire Linux kernel read-only data section is protected, entire Linux kernel exception table is protected. Also, critical global system variables like SE Linux enabled, like SE Linux enforcing, SE Linux state, uh, like SMEP, which is Supervisor Mode Execution Protection Bit, or Supervisor Mode Access Prevention Bit, or Write Protection Bit in the Control Register 4 in the x86. All of that are also protected and guarded. Additionally, all dynamically loaded models and their order in the internal structures are also guarded, including third-party models. So if someone try to change the, even the order of the loaded um, models, it will be also detected. Like someone would like to hide it by unlinking the model, it will be also detected. Optionally, it is possible to enable, uh, enable the guard of the entire IOMMU table. So you can guard the entire IOMMU table if you want to. However, it is disabled by default, but it's optionally possible to do it. By monitoring SL Linux, various SL Linux variables, LKRG has a possibility to detect various SL Linux escapes using kernel primitives. Uh, by monitoring um, CPU critical bits like SMEP or SMAP, we are able to detect various SMAP and SMEP bypasses. And also many rootkits are often changing write protection bit in the control register, so by monitoring that we are able to catch them. It's worth to mention that LKRG uh, has a communication channel uh, and is being exposed to the user uh, through the syscontrol interface. There is many various knobs which uh, are listed here and uh, they have been rewritten uh, between version 0.7 to the version 0.8 and we realize there is so many of them and they have various values that it's difficult to track all of them however we encourage everybody to go and read uh, documentation about that to correctly profile them uh, to own usage however because of that we prepare like predefined profiles and these predefined profiles helps you uh, to change uh, all of the various verification or validation logic and also change the response for the violation of any verification uh, because the knobs itself gives you the ability to configure what is being validated and how it's being validated and also it gives you ability to configure what will be the appropriate response for the violation of the previously configured verification. And because there is so many of them, we prepared the profiles, which makes it easier to manage. So please go and uh, read about uh, these knobs because uh, it is very useful information. About the performance and scalability, uh, many people always ask what is the performance impact by running LKRG. So by default, when we measure LKRG with the all default protection enabled, um, we can see the overhead around 2.5% uh, when we are speaking about the newest version, which is 0 0.8. And uh, all of the details about the performance tests are available in the performance file in the uh, source uh, tree. Uh, and this test has been uh, done on the 
Intel Xeon CPU, uh, which is model E2176G, which has six cores and 12 threads, and the OS was Ubuntu 18. Uh, 04. And additionally, the performance impact was very comprehensively evaluated by the Foronix project. And here is the link where you can uh, see all of the details tests done by them. It was more than 100 tests there. I think it's 119. And it's also worth to mention that we do not expect a significant increase in the LKRG's overhead with a higher number of concurrently running processes. Because uh, in the version 0.8, we redesign how the LKRG's uh, process tracking database works and how the logic works. And currently, we use a hash of table of red black trees with per hash packets uh, which use read write locks. And we haven't seen so far any problems with the scalability, which is cool. And that's all. Do you have maybe any questions uh, which I could answer? Thanks.